Hello everyone, Dynadon here with the uh, next update on the powder coating oven. Uh, the oven I'll be needing for making the windshield and canopy for the airplane and a few things on my automobile restoration project. Okay, so it's all done. As you can see, I got the uh, door seals installed. I ended up going with some blue this time. Uh, I've got some left over. I got almost 50 foot left over. I'm going to use that on the coarse air exhaust to isolate that. And you can see I got the door installed, the oven glass that I had on already. I got the latches for the handles, or the latches for closing the door, and a piece of glass from Lowe's on the outside with a piece of the blue seal all the way around it. So the door stuff. Okay, what I want to do is show you, I've already tested this once, but I want to show you kind of time this thing takes to heat up. <clears throat> Let me latch this up. The power's already plugged in. And it's, this thing reads in Celsius. Here's my uh, control panel, which you haven't seen before. Master switch, light switch, over temp light, fuse. Uh, the 120 volt circuit that feeds all this comes through the fuse first. So to turn the master on. This will power up Celsius K type thermocouple. And the cabinet is currently at 4 degrees Celsius, and I have it set for 204 degrees Celsius, which is one second here. I also wanted to do this since that's turned on. I'm going to go ahead and start the clock to see how long it takes to heat up. All right, so um, 200 degrees, 204 degrees Celsius is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we want to do is time this, show you how long it takes to get this thing up to 400 degrees. Meanwhile, I'll go ahead and show you some of the, what it looks like, all done. <clears throat> and what I had to do is, uh, if, if anybody's not familiar, I bought this tool. It is a Rivnut installation tool. Got this at Harbor Freight, and what you have are these little aluminum inserts that are threaded on the inside. They're kind of like a pop rivet. It comes with four sizes and four tools. And what I did is I bought that to mount this cabinet the control panel. There's four of them. There's one up in each corner. Basically you drill a hole into the sheet metal, put that in there, squeeze it like a pop rivet, and it gives you a threaded insert into thin material. So there's four of them in the corners holding this box onto the wall there and I've got four here as you can see with these little screws there's a finished insert there these are like I think 832's and the bigger ones are 1024's that are holding this box this is just a piece of that 2x4 angle uh, just you basically just cut it both sides and then you fold it so these are just square corners and I kind of trimmed it down a little so they wouldn't stick up and I drilled it and put a pop rivet in there to hold them all four sides, both sides. And then I ended up taking the popper out of these, drill them oversized, and put these inserts in. So I have a piece of sheet metal cut for that, but I wanted to leave this open. Here's the PID controller. Here's the 240 volts coming in. This is a uh, cord for an oven from Lowe's. Comes up in, one leg goes through the solid state relay. And when it switches on, it goes out. And then these are the trigger wires, the two red and black come off of the thing. Thermal couple comes in here, and then the 110 is tapped into this leg here. This is uh, bolted together from the two heating elements inside, and it's wrapped with uh, vulcanizing tape. And then it's got uh, vinyl electrical tape wrapped around it to isolate that whole thing. But I'm taking my 110 volts off of that to the fuse, and from the fuse to the master switch, and then the master switch powers the uh, PID controller and powers the switch for the lights inside. I'll go ahead and show you that. So I've got a seven and a half amp fuse in here. Here's the light switch and it's a lighted switch. And that's looking inside. You see the elements. Those are 4,000 watts each. And let me turn this switch on. You can see what it looks like with the lights in there. Okay. You can see everywhere in there, all the way up to the corners, all the way down to the bottom. So there's two, two oven lights in there, one on each side. And it gives me plenty of light so you can really see the powder coating. Okay, let's see, we've been on for almost three and a half minutes. We started at four degrees, 
we're already at 90. <coughs> like I said, the, the glass frame, the frames for the glass are just one popper of it here. If I ever break the glass, drill this popper it out, pull this channel up, take the glass out, put a new glass in. But the glass, like I said, I've already run this once and it never even got warm. When I ran it earlier today, it was at zero degrees in here, exactly freezing 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So as this thing gets closer to its target, this little green light here indicator tells you that it's outputting a signal to the SCR, which you see the little red light on. So as this approaches, I think it was about 160 degrees on the first one, it started cycling on and off to uh, keep it from overshooting on the final temp. But you can still see, let me turn the light switch back off. You can see the elements in there working. And then once it gets up to temperature, uh, those are pretty much not glowing anymore. They're just uh, off. So that's where we're at. Let's see what the time is. We're at four and a half minutes. And we're approaching 130 degrees Celsius. And the only place I can feel just a little bit of heat coming out of here, all the way down the hinge, I feel no heat. You feel no heat where the heating elements are. It's completely cold to the touch. The door is completely cold to the touch. Nothing anywhere is warm. Cabinet, top, I don't feel anything getting hot. I can just feel a little bit of heat leaking out of here because it's probably not a really tight seal. The sides, this cover may get warm because it literally wraps around and this is the inside skin. So I kind of anticipate, no, it's not going to be this side. It's actually going to be this side. If anything gets warm, it'll be this side because this goes in and around. So the inside can actually heat all the way through here. So elements are still working away. And then what I was also doing with my laser temp probe here, I got this just plugged in with a short extension I built to plug into my um, welder's soft plug. That takes a different style plug. So I had that plug for the welders. And I had this one, so I put that on my 10 foot of cord I bought at Lowe's and bought the correct socket to match this one. So now I can just plug it in and unplug and unplug the welder. So what I wanted to do is check the SCR temps. That's 54 degrees Celsius. So it's about 130 degrees. So I mean it's it's getting warm. By no means hot hot. But once it gets up to cycling and that starts cycling, which should be, there it goes, just started cycling on and off. You can see by the green light kicking on and off. It's off, it's on. Off, on, you can see the red light on the SSR. So now that'll actually start cooling down and we're at 187 degrees, going up on 190 degrees at seven minutes. Still glowing nice and cherry red in there, again, the glass, I can just barely feel it's warm. See what it says. That's 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 69, so the glass is reaching about 70 degrees. 198, 99, 200. Again, you can see the light will be cycling the output on and off. It's off right now. 203, 204, so it's actually kind of coasting up right now with power off. That's the set temperature at not even eight minutes. So in eight minutes, we're at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and this thing is ready to use. Now, 211, 212. Now I've seen guys where these things fail and they stay on, and that might be the case with this one already because I. I mean, I'm pushing 30 some amps. I'm going to turn this off once. <clears throat> I want to put two of those in. After watching some videos, I've seen people burning those things up 
And when they fail, they fail closed, meaning the contact stays hooked. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> The elements are staying on. So it's possible that thing's already died on me. But those should subside. If they're not subsiding, that means the power's not turning off. And the only way to turn it off now, you know, it looks like it's already failed. So let's see what the temperature on this is. 140 degrees. So she's getting warm already. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the breaker. Shut her down. I was looking to get, I can actually see some glowing through there where the door is probably bowing under the heat. Really no heat coming out of there. Now the elements are dying down. So, but anyway, a little bit of sweat because it's cold out here. It's only, like I said, 30s at best. So, but anyway, that's that's what's happening. I think my SSR is already toasted. Um, I've seen you guys, this, the thing's rated for 40 amps, but they fail, and when people look at them, the, the triac inside them are only really rated for like 16 amps. So, I mean, they're cheap. Those things are like three, four dollars on eBay. So, all right, that's uh, where I'm at. Uh, I may buy a better brand of those things or get two of them. Um, I mean, the thing really didn't get hot enough to fail. Let me turn it back, turn the breaker back on just to see what happens. I was kind of expecting this that could happen. It didn't do anything on the first run, first test. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. You see, those things are cheap, but I may end up putting two of them in there. Let's see if those start glowing again. If they start glowing, then it means that SSR is toast. It's only 90 degrees on the inside. Let's see what the outside looks like. Real quick. 110. It has cooled down. If you can see it, 111. Because those things, like I say, they will fail on. Now, I don't see the elements coming back on. Let's try it. See what happens. Two thirty-eight. So it kind of coasted up. It's not calling for any heat. So neither one of them's got a light on. But the idea is, if those things start glowing again, that means their the unit has failed. So, see what happens. And I do have, this red light is for an alarm, high alarm. Once it gets up to, uh, I think it's originally set right now for 100, uh, 400 degrees. So it won't alarm out till 400. Uh, but I got to go back in and change it to 34. See, it shouldn't be that high. It should have cycled off before that. This morning when I ran the test, it was working just fine. See, it's dropping down a little bit now. But they're not cycling on. So, may not have burned it up completely, I guess. But it should have shut off. So, anyway, just wanted to get this video made, show you how quickly this oven heats up. And I think part of it is due to the, it's been running for 12 and a half minutes since I started. So, um, but I wanted to show you how quickly this thing heats up. And I think part of that is due to me insulating that inner sheet metal from the frame. I've seen people or videos have cabinets this size, maybe not even big as this, that were running. It'd take them two hours to get up to this temperature, which is crazy. So this thing heats up way quicker than I ever expected. Let me go ahead and pop this door open. We'll let that cool off a little bit. Get some air in there. Uh, bottom is catching on the frame down there. So we're at 218, 15, 14. Okay, see it's calling for heat. It's kicking on and off now to try and keep from dropping too fast. Get this thing latched again. 
Ouch. Uh, might want to put some better latches on there. So now it's showing it's closed again. I want to see if it cycles off. Yeah, it's still blinking on and off. So it's saying it's working. Let's see if it'll maintain. And that's what I was doing this morning when I first ran the test. You can see both the lights blinking. The SSR and the relay. The relay and then the light here is showing that it's cycling, trying to bring it up to temp. And it should stay, the elements shouldn't glow. They're just barely, just barely showing some glow. It's hard to see in there, but. But it seems to be working okay right now. Didn't burn it out, so. All right, well, I'm gonna shut this down. And in this video, I'll get this thing put in the computer and get her uploaded tonight so you guys can see what I'm up to. Meanwhile, here's my, uh, I'm gonna laminate this thing so I have a reference of Fahrenheit to Celsius because this thing only records in Celsius. I can't change it to Fahrenheit. And there's the panel. You just gotta put four holes in it, deburr it, and bolt it on the outside of that and if everything's well. So I got this thing going. There's 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Reset. All right. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for this video. As always, appreciate everybody taking their time to watch it. And feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns, and I'll answer them as they come along. Now, my next project is to get a frame built for sliding in there. And I'm going to go buy a piece of plexiglass, make a little arch form, and I'm going to see if I can't make that windscreen windshield again and get that in there. And then I'll uh, purchase some bigger chunks of plastic and get that form made. So, okay, everybody, that's going to be it for today. Again, as always, thanks for watching. This is Dino Don out.